Hello everyone, my name is Kyra Frias, and this is my art tutorial on making a self-portrait. Just a quick shout out to Black Diamond Authority for the amazing support. There's such a wonderful community of artists, so be sure to check them out and support them. And if you're more of a beginner in painting, be sure to check out their other art tutorials. So this is our color palette for today, I'm using oil paint. So we have some cobalt blue here some cadmium red, and some cadmium yellow. I also included some Prussian blue in there, but this primary color mix is going to be essential for any color mixing. I also have some brown in there to help me if my skin tones start to get a little funky. And of course we have some titanium white, and some ivory black. And I also have some colors pre-mixed here for our skin tones. And with that, let's get started on the base drawing. So for this specific self-portrait, I am using a photo reference that I took for this piece. However, it is a great practice on your artistic skills to do this in front of a mirror and work from a live reference. It doesn't have to be perfect, especially if it's your first time. These practices are simply about learning the anatomy of the human body and making adjustments as you go just doing whatever feels right to you and your style. I also want to preface that I do try to go for a semi-realistic style, which has its whole own painting process, so if you have a different art style, you do what is best for you and your process. Art is super open-ended, and I'm just here to offer some tips and some pointers that could possibly help guide you. Typically when starting a drawing or a painting, you want to focus on basic shapes first. That way you can easily make adjustments as needed to the proportions, and then all the details will fall into place afterwards. Now I'm going to start adding in details that will be pertinent to my drawing, specifically when mapping out shadows and highlights. And like I said before, depending on your style, you don't need to add in all these little details like I am. Especially since these lines are going to be covered up anyway. But for me personally, these details help guide my painting. So here I am using some guidelines to help me construct the face. These can be super helpful in mapping out proportions, especially if you're creating a figure from scratch. But in this particular instance, using my photo reference, I am laying out points in the mouth and in the eyes in relation to the shape of the face. So for example, I see that the bottom corner of the mouth is slightly above the crease between the cheek and the chin. It's all just going off of what you see, and like I said, you can always make adjustments later. Then for the background, I'm just going to map out some basic shapes. I want my figure to be the main focus of the piece, so obscuring that background is going to help in that, and it's also going to save time from doing every little detail. And this is the finished drawing! Now we can get started on the painting. Next, I'm applying a wash before starting the actual painting. This is going to help fill in any exposed white spots on the paper or the canvas, as well as add a color tone to the entire piece. Now, I use linseed oil as the medium, which is not very spreadable, so for something like this, I would use something thinner like a turpentine to mix in with your paint. And now we're going to start layering on our first bits of color. I'm going to start by layering on paint from darkest to light, so here I'm starting with the shadows. Notice how it's not pure black, I'll talk about that later. And now I'm adding the base skin color. Notice how I'm trying to avoid any spots that I'm going to apply a separate shade or color on? This is going to help avoid your colors from blending too much and making them all look muddy. 
Here I'm using a fluffy brush to help blend the shadows into the rest of the skin and to make a very natural gradient. This is going to help it look more realistic. Just using the brush to gradually pull one color into the other. This is also why applying separated layers of color and avoiding that muddiness is helpful, is because now you have a separate brush for each color. So here, I thought the base skin color was dominating the gradient a bit too much, so I just applied more of that shadow color with my brush from earlier, and now I can balance out the gradient more and add more contrast to that shadow. Like I already mentioned, my style is semi-realistic, so all of these little details you don't need to do, nor do you have to do it in this order, this is just how my attention is spanned. And the good thing about oil paint is that it's rather malleable while it's still wet, so if you have a spot in your piece you don't like or you want to touch up on proportions, most of the time you can just take a paper towel and scrape the paint off. So now here we're applying the lighter colors of the skin leading into the highlights. I touched on this briefly, but when it comes to shadows and highlights, I don't recommend using pure black or pure white. This is going to flatten out your image and make it look unrealistic. There is a lot more color in the world than we care to notice, so for shadows, I would mix your own dark shade using the primary color palette from earlier, only applying a little bit of black if needed. And for highlights, I would take white and mix in a couple colors to match the warmth of the light or the shade of the skin. For this specific highlight right here, the camera doesn't capture it very well, but I'm actually using a light shade of yellow. Now here I noticed a bit of red pigmentation in the neck and in the transitional shadows below the nose, so I'm just applying that. When painting a human figure, don't be scared to add in a little color variation. This is going to help it look more realistic and alive, and these puffs of colors will make your composition more interesting. Here I'm just applying the base color of the lip. Again, just jumping around as I see fit. I try not to focus on one area for too long. Here I'm just cleaning up some edges with a paper towel, and then I'm also using this dark color for the hair to define the shape of the face a bit more. Skipping ahead a bit, now I'm working on the eyes. And again, using a bit of color under that water line to add some variation. Now I'm working with the hair. Trying not to overwhelm myself with every little strand and just focusing on basic colors first and then adding some details afterwards. Now to fill in the shirt. Frankly, I wore a rather complicated shirt for this piece, but hey, I like a challenge. And since it is a striped shirt, I do want to add some curve and density variation in the lines, just to make it more realistic as it forms across the curves of my body. You want to try to avoid fully straight lines. And for the background, I'm just applying some loose shapes and then blurring them out with a fluffy brush. In this photo, I was in front of some forest scenery, which can have a lot of detail going on. So to make sure my figure remains the focus of the piece, I'm going to sort of create a blur effect to the background and make it more obscure. And then here's the finished piece. Thank you guys so much for watching my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to learn something from it. 
And again, thank you to Black Diamond Authority. Be sure to check them out. And again, my name is Kyra Frias. I do have a website portfolio as well if you wanted to check out some more of my work. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.